Today on Legally Us, the London Clinic launched an investigation into staffers trying to access Princess Kate's records. And can Lady Rose Hanbury sue for defamation after Prince William's affair rumors? Plus, Sophie Turner reactivates her divorce against Joe Jonas. We've got that plus so much more on today's Legally Us. And welcome to Legally Us. I'm Christina. That's, of course, Nima Romani, president and CEO of West Coast Trial Lawyers. Hey, Nima, how are you? Fantastic, Christina. How are you doing? I am doing good. Um, I, I don't know if anybody could escape the royal uh, news that has been upon us this past week, but now it's entering into legal territory. So love to get your expertise on this one. So the London Clinic recently launched an investigation into its staffers after members of the hospital reportedly tried to access Kate's private records following her January abdominal procedure. So the Daily, Daily Mail reported this, and the investigation came to light after one staff member attempted to access Kate's notes on file without permission. Um, this is, of course, according to the outlet, and this is uh, the hospital staff said it is uh, to be utterly shocked and distraught over the allegations and were very hurt that a trusted colleague could have allegedly been responsible for such a breach of trust and ethics. Now, Kensington Palace also issued a statement noting that the princess is aware of the breach and that this is a matter for the London Clinic. Um, the London Clinic probably uh, is in a little bit of trouble right now. Asked about the breach, uh, the, about the breach report received by the Information Commissioner's Office, a spokesperson for London's um, police said, we are not aware of any referral to the Metropolitan Police at this time. So what exactly does an inv investigation like this kind of entail? What are they looking for? And how did this kind of come to light, you think? Well, Christina, there's a few components here. And obviously, here in the United States, we have HIPAA that prevents someone who's not authorized from accessing your medical records. And that's why whenever you go to a doctor, even to communicate with another medical provider, you'll have to sign an authorization or a HIPAA release. Now, obviously, the UK doesn't have HIPAA, but they have their own Data Protection Act that mm -hmm. protects this type of medical information. And speaking of data, it's pretty clear right now, whenever you access a file or a site, who's doing so? So this is something that is easy to catch. And it's just really a question of, did the perpetrator just try to access the data or was he or she able to actually see it? In which case, that would be a very serious violation. Mm -hmm. And what would that um, what would that entail? Does that involve jail time for them? Um, because obviously this is pretty um, important information. A lot of people don't know exactly what she went into the hospital for. They said abdominal surgery, but it's been clouded in mystery since then. So if this information does come forward, because as Kensington Palace then get involved, does the Metropolitan Police then get involved as well? I think so, Christina. There's really three potential layers. The first would be an administrative. Obviously, a doctor or a nurse or a medical professional, they would be licensed and there'd be a body that regulates them. So there could be some administrative penalty. They could be suspended or even lose their license entirely. And of course, to the extent that there's been a criminal violation, and obviously we've talked about the different phone hacking and other scandals involving the royals, that could be a criminal investigation and prosecution. And of course, you know, Kate can always file a civil lawsuit for invasion of privacy. That's also something that we've covered here on the show with respect to the Royals. If she wants to go after the perpetrator to say that her privacy rights were violated, she can absolutely do so. Oof, this is bad. Um, well, kind of continuing on the Royal beat, uh, Lady Rose Hanbury reportedly denied rumors that, um, that Kate's public absence is due to an affair with Prince William after Stephen Colbert brought the idea to the masses. Um, she is said to be um, very distraught about everything, and her lawyers told Business Insider that the rumors are completely false. Um, so uh, this is kind of just speculation, but this seems to be a defamatory uh, statement that was brought out about her. Can she sue publications? Could she go after Stephen Colbert if she really wanted to kind of make this uh, progress this even further? Because these rumors have been going around since 2019. So could she do after, could she go after anybody in this case if she really wanted to? She potentially can, Christina, but I don't think it's going to be that good of a case. And this is why. And like you said, these rumors have been going on for quite some time. Obviously, they resurfaced recently because of Kate's 
disappearance and mm -hmm. a doctored photo for some period of time. So, you know, Rose and Kate have a relationship and, you know, uh, there appears to have been a falling out. But if you really go back and listen to what Stephen Colbert said, he was really just saying there are rumors and people are speculating, you know, no different than you and I are here on the show. We're just reporting what other people are speculating. We're not saying that it's absolutely true that Rose had an affair with Williams or putting out a definitive statement. Because of the nuanced nature of what Colbert said, I don't think it's going to be a good defamation case. Yeah. Well, and this also comes after Getty Images issued a statement revealing that the photo shared by the official um, Prince and Princess of Wales Instagram account in April of 2023 was manipulated. Um, they said Getty Images has reviewed the image in question and placed an editor's note on it, stating that the image has been digitally enhanced at source. So this uh, is probably like the second or third image that they have now come forward saying that it has been digitally enhanced. I feel like everybody digitally enhances photos, but now could Getty do something against Kensington Palace? Are they not really a trusted source? And could people maybe go after the original source of people for doctoring these photos? Potentially, yes. But again, I don't think this is going to be a good case. Usually, you know, media companies, they don't go after, you know, individuals. And to the extent they did, there would really have to be some sort of fraud or some sort of misrepresentation. Obviously, if the palace said, you know, we represent that this is a true and accurate picture, and it turns out that that's not the case, or if there was some financial transaction where Getty Images paid for something that really wasn't what they bargained for, then yes. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine a situation where, you know, reporters are going to go after either Kate or the palace or whomever doctored this photo again, unless there was some representation and some financial transaction that took place. Yeah, I just would not want to be the royal family in this mess lately. It just seems like it, the uh, the mystery, the allegations, everything kind of keeps mounting against them. But um, hopefully no uh, legal problems now come their way after all of this. But it definitely seems like probably something with this London clinic, uh, something probably is going to progress in this one as well. Definitely. And sometimes there's the courtroom and sometimes there's a court of public opinion. And yeah. definitely the royal family is losing the public relations battle here. Christina. Definitely. So moving right along to Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner, we hear that Joe is not surprised by Sophie, by Sophie filing paperwork to reactivate their divorce proceedings. So uh, he said in a statement, the filing was a legal formality and the couple continues to negotiate an amicable resolution. So uh, this was a uh, rep for Joe told us weekly in a statement. So this comes after, as obviously we know that they have gone back and forth for quite some time. Um, we've confirmed that she filed paperwork in Miami, Florida, asking that her and Jonas's divorce case be reactivated following the January expiration of their temporary custody agreement. So why, why did they let it expire and why activate it right now? So, Christina, going back, and we remember the very serious allegations that were made where mm -hmm. you know, Sophie was alleging that Joe kidnapped the children, right? So the divorce was getting really nasty. Then all of a sudden, you know, th there was this 180 where the parties agreed to get into a mediation and they came to a temporary agreement. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so while the parties were mediating and trying to come to a resolution, they put the litigation on hold. They weren't going to mm -hmm. actually decide where the kids kidnapped and where should they reside. They were going to try to settle it. So um, so they agreed to put the case on hold essentially for a period of time. And, you know, that hold can't be indefinite. Uh, the case needs to move forward. It seems like it's going to resolve, but now the case is going to move through the normal process where the parties are going to have to decide on custody. It seems like they have some co-parenting arrangement after the parties decide on the custody and they'll have to determine a child support and spousal support. And if they can't come to uh, an agreement, then that's what judges are for. So I think the case is just going to move on, but we're not going to see the nasty litigation that we saw in 2020. No. But we do know that they want to have the kids half the time in the UK, half the time here. How does that really work out? I mean, that's got to be like a logistical kind of nightmare, but I'm sure they have to pick where the kids are going to go to school, do curriculums kind of go from, you know, New York to the UK to LA, things like that. So it seems like it's going to be a lot of moving pieces. 
I agree, Christina. That's not something that you typically see when you have kids that are school age. They usually reside in one country. Mm-hmm. They don't bounce back and forth between different countries and or even different states for that matter. They want to be um, in one school with their classmates and so forth. So it's going to be interesting to see, is this really a 50-50 split or is it more of you know, summer is in the UK and we're going to uh, spend the school year here in the United States. So I'll have to wait and see. All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Legally Us. Nima, thank you so much as always. Thanks for having me, Christina. I'll see you next week. All right. I'll see you next week.